In the last video, we uh, solved this particular equation by factoring using the AC method. I wanted to just quickly go through and uh, show two other ways to approach and, and solve, maybe check your answers if you were solving it the original way. One would be to use the quadratic formula. I had mentioned that earlier. So in this problem, if you're thinking standard form, again, AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero, A is two, B is negative 13, and C is negative seven. So if we wanted to use the quadratic formula to go directly to the answers, we could do X is equal to negative B, which is negative 13, plus or minus the square root b squared, which is negative 13 squared, minus 4, a is 2, c is negative 7, and then that's all over to a, oops, a is 2. Okay, so at this point we've got a lot of simplifying to do. One of the reasons I don't like the quadratic formula unless I actually absolutely have to do it. It is one of the most complicated formulas to use that you will ever do. It's got um, negative signs everywhere. It's got the radical. It's actually two formulas of one. It's this term plus that, and then it's x is equal to this term minus that. It's uh, You need to know order of operations very well. You need to be comfortable working with positive and negative numbers, integers. Um, it, it's just, there's a lot of ways to make a mistake with this. And so just be aware. I know a lot of folks like to just, because for quadratic equations, you can always find the answers using the quadratic formula. A lot of people like to go directly to it. But frankly, for problems uh, that are factorable, you're almost always less likely to make mistakes if you can factor the thing first. So... Let me continue going through with, with simplifying this. So we've got a lot of work to do to simplify this expression. Negative times negative 13 brings me back to 13. So we're plus or minus. 13 squared is 169, right? Negative times negative is positive. Again, negative times negative is positive, so that's going to be 8 times 7 is 56. So plus 56, and then that's going to be all over 4. Now I have to add 169 plus 56 is 225. Okay, so this is x is equal to 13 plus or minus the square root of 225, principal square root I should say, all over 4. The principal square root of 225 is 15, so this becomes 13 plus or minus 15 all over 4. And so now I'm going to write the two solutions that this gives me as x is equal to 13 plus 15 over 4, or x is equal to 13 minus 15 over 4. That simplifies to x is equal to 28 over 4, x is equal to, sorry, 7. Um, and then this becomes x is equal to negative 2 over 4, which simplifies to negative 1 half. And those are the answers that we saw in the previous video. Now, you would check those again by plugging them in like I did before. I want to just show you how to use your calculator to approximate these solutions as well, or to check your answers. And I think I can do that here in a reasonable amount of time. So if you take a calculator, you can look, work to solve an equation like this. And what we want to do is if you go to the function editor, y equals, uh, I'm going to clear out that old equation. I'm going to type in the quadratic equation here, and that's 2x to the 2. I forgot to hit, I could have hit the x squared button, but I'm just used to doing the exponent. Uh, x squared minus 13x minus 7. So you type in the left hand side there and, and we're going to find where this expression equals 0 by using the zeros function but we'll be able to see where it equals 0 by where it crosses the x-axis on the graph. So once I type it in I can actually just type graph and on the default window I can see that it crosses the x-axis about halfway between negative 1 and 0, 
and it also crosses at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So when x equals 7, this expression is 0, or very close to. And you can actually use the calculator to calculate those two zeros, again, by typing second, calculate, we arrow down to the 0 and hit 0. All right, now if I want to find this negative 1 half, I have to pick up an x value to the left of it. So I could type, I could type negative 2, that's to the left of the value I'm looking for. And it puts this arrow here. And now I'm going to put my right bound, I'm going to type 0. You can also trace along using these arrows to get that. My guess I'm going to put is negative 1. That's between those two. And it uses Newton's method to then find x is e at x equals negative a half, y equals 0. And you can do a similar thing to find this value and verify that your calculator says 7. You can now go back to your original equation. You can actually plug that in and see what the calculated value is as well. If you had calculated this and you didn't want to graph it, as long as you put it in your function in y1, you can quit to your main screen and you can use the vars button to say vars, arrow over to where it says y vars, and we want functions, and we're going to do function y1. And we're going to say y1 of negative 0 0.5, negative 1 half, and that is 0. And we can do the same thing. I can go vars, y vars, function, y1 of, and then I can say 7. When I plug 7 into this expression, my calculator very quickly calculates and tells me it's 0.